Hello everybody, welcome back to the Desmo Works channel and this is take two. Um, I just started editing the intro last night and suddenly realised I'd rambled a lot so I figured uh, I'd redo that. So the bike has already been started on as you can see in the background but I felt it only fair to you to actually talk some sense rather than some babble in my introduction. So today's video is about the Thunder bike, just getting it ready for 2020 season. Um, I'm due out on the first meeting at Brands Hatch Indy on the weekend of the 7th of March. So I've got to do some basic servicing on the bike. So if you'll remember at the last meeting in Cadwell where we developed the electrical problem on the bike, I've done a lot of the layup sort of servicing ready for the winter. So there's some stuff I'm pretty comfortable with what, that I'm not going to touch. But basically, I'm going to service the fork sills. And get them done and probably the bushes internally as well. I'm going to swing through the electrical components just to make sure whether or not the ignition pickup is the electrical fault that I think I'm getting when we get up to temperature. So I've got a, if you'll remember from Cadwell, it's a hot running intermittent fault. So when the bike gets up to temperature, I'm losing either my ignition signal or a spark. And I think it's coming from the ignition pickup. So I'm just going to swing for all the components and just check everything. So anything that sort of deals with the bike running ECU wise, I'm just going to double check, but I'm going to start with that one first. I've got a new set of HT leads. So some MagnaCore eight mil leads. That's just a, a minor upgrade. Um, they're slightly better um, for longevity versus the sort of standard Ducati ones. I've heard good things about them. They were roughly the same price as buying the OEM ones. So I'm going to stick them on the bike and see how they go. And then in line with the new ACU regs, I've got to fit a brake lever guard on the right hand side of the bike. So that will be going on and then basic servicing. So although I've only done like one meeting on the oil, fresh oil and filter for the new season, um, I'll also check the belt tension. So I'm not going to change the belts, but what I'll do is take the covers off and just check the tension um, because it's done, what's it done now? Probably about 100 miles or so on track since the, the build. So it's, it's reached the point that if it was a road bike, you'd be service checking the belts tension anyway. And then just going through and just checking the bike over again. So, um, I've cleaned the bike already. So normally I'd clean the bike. That was part of the intro in the last video, but I've already done that. And that just helps me find any little odds and sods that might need attention. So I found the V piece has lost a bolt. So that will need replacing. Um, I lost the heel guard off of the rear sets, but they're aftermarket sets. So I'm probably gonna run without the heel guard until I can uh, suitably uh, manufacture one or find a replacement. So with that being said, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start getting um, access to the belts. So what I what I did yesterday in the video that you're not going to see, uh, sorry, what I did yesterday that was not in the video was disconnect the battery. So whenever you're working on a bike uh, from a servicing point of view, safety first, disconnect the battery. No point in having a live bike when you're sort of messing around with all your electrical components, fuel system, etc. So I always disconnect the battery. So you'll see when, when we start filming that the battery's already gone and that's because I took it off yesterday. So thank you, let's get into this, enjoy the video. Okay, to check the belt tension that sits behind this cover and this cover up here, I'm going to need to take off the battery holder, fuel tank, and then the air box. And then that will give me access to the set of covers, which I'll then take off that gives me access to the belt. Then we'll stick the bike's engine into horizontal top dead center, and we'll check this tension, and then move the bike to vertical top dead center and check this belt.
Okay, so quick update. We've now got access to the horizontal belt cover and the vertical belt cover. So they are held in by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bolts. So I'm just going to take all of those off now. Okay, belt covers off. So, uh, just a quick look round, check that nothing looks untoward. So I'm just looking at all of the fixtures and fittings inside here while I've got the belt covers off. Everything seems okay. So coming around to this side of the bike, we need to get this cover off of the alternator that gives us access to the turning point on the crank. So we've got two countersunk bolts here to take out. So let's just pop those out quickly. Right, a top tip. Don't put the crank turning tool in until you've removed the spark plugs. The tangs that sort of sit in these little gaps just here are quite weak. So if you end up compressing against the closed cycle and the combustion cycle, i.e. the valves are closed and the spark plugs are still in, you do run the risk of tearing this tool apart and leaving the two bits of metal in there. Sometimes they just pop out nice and easy, sometimes it's a little bit of an interference fit so they'll get stuck in there which you don't want. Now you would have seen this crank turning tool beforehand but effectively you can put a timing wheel on here as you'll have seen when I did the timing video but there's the two little prongs that go into the end of that camshaft where the bearing is. So if you, if you get these two little bits broken off the way to get them out is to have to take the alternator cover off, generator cover whatever you want to call it because that gap where these sit is created by the bearing in the cover and then the end of the crankshaft and then you get a bolt that just screws into the end of the crankshaft to keep that in place so let's just stick that in quickly okay so crank turning tools in always turn anti-clockwise you feel it judder a lot so just going to do that check we've got full range of movement looks good now the lighting's not great around here but you'll remember you got a little mark on the wheel a mark on the case and then I put marks on these wheels because these were aftermarket wheels so what we've got to do is just line everything up with its timing mark so horizontal and then vertical. We're in the timing position for putting the belts on, which is to say that the horizontal cylinder is at top dead center and the vertical isn't. Quick way to double check, just stick the screwdriver down and it shouldn't be able to go fully in. Whereas this one drops in. All right, there is a Ducati tool that you can stick in when you're timing the engine, which you can then connect directly to a DTI or a clock gauge, whichever you like to call them in your country, so that you can measure accurately what top dead center is. But I don't need to do that just to check the belt tension. So having got this into top dead center horizontally, I can now check the horizontal belt once we've done that, I'll then move to the vertical top dead center and check the tension on that belt. Okay, so we've got the clavis tool to do our frequency measurement. Now horizontally, I need to measure the tension here using the tool. And 
if you remember when we built the engine this was set to 110 the lower service limit while it's in use is 70 Hertz so as long as it's between 110 and 70 we're good so let's just check that so I've taken four readings and it's coming out at 90 which is pretty good so I'm happy with that I'll leave that as is I'm not going to make any adjustment on that let's uh, let's move the vertical cylinder up to its top dead center position and then we can take the tension on here as well vertical cylinder is now at top dead center what I've just done is I've checked this on its compression cycle just by just looking down in there to ensure that the um, valves are shut on the intake side so all I'm going to do is get the tool into this little gap here and take the belt tension again right that is reading at the service limit so I'm going to have to adjust the vertical one which means basically undoing here just turning this so it slightly adds a bit more tension in I'll put it to 90 so it's at the same tension position as the horizontal cylinder rather than taking it up to the 110 for a new belt install sorry I didn't realize my camera just cut out then um, <laughs> Ah, oh, technology, gotta love it. Right, so uh, we're at 91.6 on the vertical belt. So basically what I'm gonna do is turn the engine over one complete revolution, just check the tensions again. So I'll do the vertical one first as I'm in that position. So I'll do a full revolution. Then I'll put it back to the timing mark for horizontal top dead center and also check that one. And just check that we're still in the 90 hertz position for both belts, which is well, well within the service limit. Okay, just spun it round and we were getting 92 and a half on the vertical belt and we were getting 94 on the horizontal belt. Um, and I did one complete revolution for the engine for both belts. So I'm re relatively comfortable that we're in spec for the belt tension. So what I'm going to do now, put all this side back together. So covers will go back on. I'll put the battery holder back in, connect up the start solenoid and the fuel solenoids etc uh, so that we're in a position that this side of the bike is completed again let's do that then. A little bit of advice I like to start the bolts by hand and I don't know if you can make that out there but I just started to feel a little bit of resistance and it looks like the very start of the thread has just pulled away on the aluminium casting so if I'd have forced that in I'd have stripped the whole thread but it's just it's a quick one it's always worth sticking these things in by hand when you first start them off you see a lot of people use like impact guns to drive these little six mile mil steel bolts into an aluminium casing so it's very easy to do damage so it's a nice little bit there that just spotted and a nice little tip to share okay battery box back on check everything is sort of in the right sort of place leads and everything okay while I've got the um, fuel tank off I'm just going to pull out the horizontal spark plug lead and then stick in the replacement MagnaCore unit so let's just quickly pop that out so the horizontal lead is the longer one of the two so let's just do the vertical. So the vertical sits here, it's a little bit easier to get to. I've not got a plug in there at the moment because I've just ordered some new uh, racing plugs that I'll talk you through when they turn up, but that's the vertical lead in as well. So HT leads done. What I'm just going to do is disconnect the turning gear now before we risk damaging anything. Okay, so turning gear covers on. 
you'll notice that I've got the um, some of the hose pipes disconnected. Ooh. Still got water in them, great fun. Um, that was so I could get access to the timing gear that I've taken out. Now the reason behind that is um, you have to measure the resistance of the ignition timing pickup at 20 degrees. Now I'm in the midst of our lovely British winter, almost spring, so I think today's temperature is about 6 degrees, so it's not great. So I've got that indoors at the moment to bring it up to temperature, so the house is sat at 20 because my wife seems to believe that's the temperature everything should sit at. So later I'll go in and measure that, so that was just to let you know that that's the reason why there's a piece missing out the engine and these two hoses are disconnected at the moment. Okay, so I'm just going to test the resistance of the ignition pickup but one of the bits that I found that's a problem is that there's a split in the insulation just by the pickup so that might have been part of the problem because we might not have been getting a clean signal but to check the resistance get an ohmmeter and what you're looking to do is go between the positive and the negative connections And we're reading a resistance of 800 ohms on the replacement one. Go to the same position again, just to see what we're getting. Seven hundred and thirty ohms. So it's got high resistive load in it. But what I'll also do is I'll check the gap between this and the timing wheel, but that that split might have been our problem. So here's the replacement one. We'll go and get that set up on the bike now. So as you remember, the sensor came out of there, but I'm gonna need access to this little inspection port here. So what I'm gonna to have to do is take off the main radiator hose, the thermostat housing from down there, and then that will hopefully give me access or clean access to be able to get some feeler gauges into that inspection port. So let's just quickly whack this collection of pipes off. So just move the generator lead out of the way. That gives me access to the inspection port. All we need to do now is then is just stick in the timing sensor and let's do some measuring. Okay, you might just be able to make out the sensor and the timing wheel or at least a tooth of it anyway so I've got to measure that gap that I'm first first looking through it looks quite big but let's get some feeler gauges in there and find out what we've got so I'm going to go straight with the 0.8 just to see where we are because if this goes in easily I know I've got to close off some of this gap mm -hmm. yeah so 0.8 is uh slack as anything in there so what i'm going to do is just quickly take that out oh in fact actually let's try and work out what the measurement is first because then i can um so i'm going to go with 1.3 and see if that gets in there okay so it's not as big as 1.3 go with 1.1 almost that's 1.05 millimeters worth of shim okay so we're at about one point that's quite tough but that's point that's 1.05 uh, millimeters worth of feeler gauge gone in there so i need to take off at least 0.25 on those shims so let's just pop them back off see what these shims are So one of these shims is 0 0.2. Point 0.6. And 0.4. I'm going to try taking out the 0.4 because that will take us down to the lower end of the um, clearance. It should take us close to 0.6. So I'm going to stick back the 0.2 
and the 0.6 so I'm putting 0.8 worth of shim in so we'll just stick that on there and then the little ceiling ring goes back over just clean the end off make sure there's no debris on it okay stick that back in the bike okay let's go straight with the 0.6 so 60 let's see where we get Yeah, so there's a slight, slight bit of friction there, which is what we're after. So that appears to be good. Let's just check with the 0.7. Yeah, so the 0.7 doesn't go in. So I'm going to go with 0.65 just to double check where we're at. And it's a, it's a tight fit. So we're between 0.6 and 0.65, which is perfect. So what I'm going to do now is just stick the inspection port back in. So it's a little plug with a washer on there. I'm just going to put a little bit of free bond around that so, so it keeps it sealed. Okay, one replacement ignition sensor fitted. Now I'm hoping the combination of the split that we found in the case and the reset gap to its lower um, clearance should resolve my hot running problem. Um, now this, the clearance on this one might have been so much greater than the other one because there might have been slight difference in the length of the sensor. Because if you remember when we did build the engine I did set this up correctly but I set it up to the 0.8 clearance so it might have just in the really hot conditions we were having at Cadwell, that's why it might have created my problem, as well as having the breakdown in the insulation. Okay, just need to reconnect this lead back up, which goes to this connector here. Okay, what I'm going to do now is just put the air box back on, because everything that I needed to do on this side of the engine is done. Okay, air box back on, and air tubes connected back in, and trumpets on. So uh, these are standard and have the air filters in them, the factory ones. Um, can't really make them out, but there's a sort of foam, foam gauze in there. They were brand new last season. Haven't done them enough miles to warrant changing them, so I'm not going to. Okay, so next thing to do is fit the brake guard onto the clip on I just noticed I've still got the crash damage grip from Cadwell so I'll uh, cut that off and put a fresh one on so all I need to do is get the plastic crash bung out of the end there and then basically just push this in and then tighten up with a bolt at the end and then just to make sure it's aligned so that we can still brake cleanly without it hitting the brake guard let's get on with that then There we go, simple as that. So just protects the brake guard lever from contact with another bike. Finest Chinese ABS plastic, doing, doing, doing. Okay, so we're gonna replace the spark plug. So these are the standard ones, RA59GC Champions. And what I just noticed <laughs> is the um, plug is uh, loose at the top, the connecting pin, so Oh, I'm finding everything now aren't I so it looked like that might have worked its way loose good old v-twins in their vibration however slight little modification I am going to use the QA55 V's from Champion which is a surface discharge plug rather than a standard now these are used in the SPS engines as standard equipment these are used in the rest of the bike range as standard equipment Okay, so we've got two of these little bad boys. That's not loose. Need a 16mm plug socket to get them in. 
let's stick them in the bike. And these bad boys get torqued down to 20 newton meters. Okay, sorry, but the top plug is in. I just I didn't realize I switched the camera on, but same, same way of fitting as per the uh, horizontal one that I've just done as well. Next service step, let's pop the oil filter and the oil out. So just got to remove this bit of wire locking that's holding the pair of them together. So let me grab some snips and I'll pop that out and then just undo the filling plug so that we take away any trapped air and then the sump plug and that will drain it out. Um, I'm not pre-warming the engine. I know some people like to do that, but at the end of the day, it's been sat like this for two weeks now. So what oil there is in the engine will be in the sump and I'm not going to immediately fill it. So I'll just leave it draining as long as I need to. So I want to finish all the rest of the servicing work before I top the oil up. So I will be putting a fresh filter in, but I'll leave the oil for now. Okay, so I'm just going to leave the bike, bike to drain its oil out for a while um, because it's cold. So we'll just leave that doing that, merrily dripping away, make sure it's all out. But it was good oil in it anyway. I've cleaned off the magnetic chip. There was some very small, minor little flakes, nothing serious to worry about. So all good. Next job is I'm just going to put the V piece back on that had had a nut come loose. Um, I've had a good check of the oil cooler, looks all, all okay. So we'll just get this V piece back on. Interesting, just found out that the reason that's loose is because the thread has stripped itself. So I can only assume that um, through vibrating, it's uh, chewed the thread out. So these are uh, steel bolts in a aluminium cover casing. So a little bit frustrating. So I might just have to do a tie wrap through the bolt hole and round just to keep that tight. Okay, it's in with a uh, set of tie wraps. This is all held in by the main fairing anyway, so it's just to make sure that it can't pop off when it's when the fairing's down. What I'll do is I'll order a new one of these covers. There's a company in America that makes aftermarket ones, so I can get around this because unfortunately I've just checked my pile of spares and every one I've got has got either both the tangs broken off or it's got the same problem they, they appear to have been stripped threads okay okay so I'm going to call it a wrap for today's video because it's going on for quite a while so what have we done so V piece is on the ignition sensor has been replaced and the gap set we've given everything a good clean down and check over we've put new HT leads on new spark plugs are in Oil has been drained, ready to change. Had all of this side apart and did the belt tension as well. So quite quite a bit of progress. Thanks for watching once again. So next video, which will be the continuation of finishing off the servicing, we're gonna do the forks, clutch check over, and do the filter in the fuel pump, which I know a few of you have asked to see done anyway. So that, that will cover that off, yeah. Um, Two weeks away from racing at Brands Hatch Indy Circuit now, so March the 7th, I think, that weekend. I'm out on track, so I hope to get some uh, good footage from that weekend. I've just found out today when taking my transponder off charge that the batteries died, so I need to get that away and repaired, so that will be done shortly. Okay, so thanks for watching. I just want to say that if you're a subscriber to the channel, thank you very much for subscribing, uh, particularly those that have been here ever since the start and also a big thank you to the guys that recently joined the channel uh, if you're not a subscriber please hit the subscribe button that's going to come up somewhere around there and i shall see you for the next video catch you later then cheers in bye